In this video, I'm going to explain how to calculate the exact length your coax cable transmission line should be. So you start with measuring how much cable you will need to reach the feed point of your antenna. And then, well, you know what? That's it. The proper length of any coax transmission line is how much you need to reach the antenna. It can be any length for a single antenna. Now, unfortunately, there are myths about how long a coax transmission line should be. Now, for example, among CBers, many think the transmission line has to be 18 feet, which is a half wave in the CB band. Your coax cable does not have to be a half wavelength for best transfer of power to the antenna. Also, because of something called the velocity factor, 18 feet of coax is not a half wavelength anyway. So, how'd that myth get started? Well, one answer is that mobile antenna manufacturers typically provide 18 feet of coax with their antennas. Why? So it'll be long enough to reach the antenna. What if you're a ham on 40 meters? Half waves about 64 feet, but it's 70 feet to your antenna feed point. So now you have to add another 64 feet of cable. Sounds like a real waste of perfectly good coax to me. Well, wait, doesn't SWR change at different points along the transmission line? Well, yes and no. If you could have a no loss transmission line, the answer is no. SWR, the ratio of standing waves, is set by the impedance match at the antenna feed point. So, if there is a 2 to 1 SWR at the feed point, it will be 2 to 1 anywhere along a transmission line with no loss. But coax has loss. That means the SWR will read lower at the transmitter end of a long, lossy transmission line and higher at the antenna feed point. However, with low loss coax, this usually is not a problem in the HF radio spectrum. Now here's an example. Let's say you have 100 feet of RG8 at 10 megahertz, 30 meter band, which is about the middle of the HF spectrum. Its characteristic loss at that frequency is only one half of a decibel, 0.5 dB. Now, let's say your SWR measures 3 to 1 at the transmitter. Some people would consider that high. Well, because of cable loss at the antenna, the SWR is actually 3.5 to 1. So, in this example, hardly any difference. Well, how do I know this? Well, I use this graph from an ARRL PDF article available online called Understanding SWR by Example. So here we are, down here, SWR at transmitter, SWR at antenna. So our SWR at the transmitter is 3 to 1, and the characteristic loss of RG8 at 10 megahertz is a half dB. So we just go up to a half dB, and then over this way, and we see that our SWR at the antenna is 3.5 to 1. So, you don't have to worry about the transmission line being a certain length, and since in the previous example your transceiver is seeing a 3 to 1 SWR, you will use a tuner. Many rigs with a built-in tuner can handle a 3 to 1 SWR. Well, why, if I can't get my tuner to tune, if I add a few feet of coax, it tunes? That's because a transmission line is like an impedance transformer. The impedance changes along a transmission line with standing waves. So by adding some cable, you've just changed the impedance to something your tuner can more easily deal with. It's not because there's been any uh, meaningful change in SWR. Now, here's another reason your SWR meter may read differently with various lengths of coax lines. The shield of the coax can become part of the antenna. Think about it. 
the shield is connected to one half of the antenna. So if you add coax, you're adding to the antenna, which will change the reading of your SWR meter, and current will also flow down the shield, affecting your meter reading, and cause other annoying problems. Now, this is an undesirable situation in most cases, which can be corrected by a coax choke, often called a ballon. It prevents the coax shield from being part of the antenna. They aren't hard to make or expensive to buy. Here's an example. Just some turns of coax around a ferrite ring. Now, if you feed an antenna with coax, and most of us do, you need a choke. I think two are better, one at the antenna feed point and another at the transmitter end. Well, the shield of my coax cable running to my CB antenna isn't connected to the antenna. It's connected to the frame of my vehicle. Well, your car or truck is serving as the other half of the antenna. The part that sticks up is only half of an antenna. You can't have half of an antenna and expect it to work. That'd be like a battery with one terminal. You got to have a plus and a minus. So don't worry about your coax transmission line being a certain length. Use enough low loss coax to reach the antenna and always use a choke. I strongly recommend reading the references in my description down below. They're mostly based on renowned antenna engineer Walt Maxwell, W2DU, who wrote magazine articles and books about what really happens in a transmission line and antenna, not myths. Here's another reference. An antenna engineer with a pen name of Kurt Sturba, who wrote extensively on transmission lines and antennas. You can get a free download of his articles on the website of Palomar Engineers. P-A-L-O-M-A-R. I have no association with that company. In his obit, the ARRL said Sturbo was the founder of that company. Anyway, mainstream magazines would not print his articles because he would tear up the false claims of antenna manufacturers who would then not buy advertising. Well, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more ham radio myth busting and 73.